Hey, welcome to Off The Grid with Bert. Just thought I'd do a quick review, two yearly review of this um, Type Ma branded Chinese built um, vertical axis turbine. Okay, now after a year of testing, uh, I have found that this thing is um, certainly not outputting its stated 400 watt uh, output. The most I've ever seen out of this is 250 watts. Um, and this is with this thing absolutely caning, like spinning at a massive speed. Um, yeah, it just simply doesn't, um, <clears throat> doesn't output uh, the 400 watt um, factory claim. Now, the actual turbine itself is very well built. Uh, there are a few things on it that could have been done better, but uh, as far as the structure is concerned, it is very heavily built. Uh, weighs in at about 75 kilograms. Okay, the centre section is... Well, the factory claims it's titanium, but uh, I think it's just uh, aircraft-grade aluminium. Blades are aircraft-grade aluminium. They have a very 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 fine bleeding edge there so uh, oh sorry trailing edge there um, leading edge is nice and rounded done a good job of that try and focus in on it um, now the alternator is in there <clears throat> it's a axle flow type which means it's got the coils in a um, a petal configuration with magnets top and bottom. Very efficient uh, uh, alternator design. Um, and down in here they claim is the maglev bearing. Um, I call BS on that. There's just a regular bearing up in there. This thing here seems to be some kind of adjustment. You can actually wind it up and down and um, does seem to increase the resistance on the turbine slightly. Uh, it comes with a decent six bolt uh, flange. Um, unfortunately doesn't come with a carrier to mount on the top of your tower. Um, but yes, it um, the bolts that came with it looked like stainless steel, but it turns out they were just some kind of plated bolts that have just started rusting away. Um, these ones here on the blades do appear to be a proper stainless with lock washers, but starting to rust in various places here too, uh, and also at the top. So. Um, well, I would recommend when you, if you did buy one of these, to repaint it, uh, maybe even sandblast it first and just redo it from scratch. Uh, two and a half inch tower it's on. But when these things really get going, they do produce a harmonic, which will get the turbine moving like so. So my suggestion is if you are going to buy one of these, and I, I'll get to that in a sec, what I think about that. I wouldn't bother using a two and a half inch tower. I would get something three or four inch pipe and run very heavy guy wires to it just to soak up any of that uh, vibration that's caused in the higher RPMs. Now, do I recommend this turbine? Yes and no. If you live near the coast or in a high wind area like a desert, then these would probably do quite well because if you were getting those decent RPMs out of it and constant, 250 watts, you know, it's probably not that bad. Keep your batteries trickle charged. Um, 
But yeah, if you're in a low wind area like this where there's a lot of trees around, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> it's just not going to get up the RPMs and keep those RPMs up. You're getting little pulses of power out of it, you know, 200, 250 watts. But it's momentary and it, over the long term it's not really making a lot of power um, according to the watt meter. Um, so we mounted up on top of the shed here. Um, this turbine is now up for sale so I'll be pulling it down shortly and uh, I will then modify the tower so that it tilts back that way. Uh, and I'm going to be putting an Easter Breeze I-1500 prop turbine, which will go up another sort of six metres or so up there. Um, and that'll work a lot better, I'm, I'm sure. I've ordered the five blade version, which um, will develop more torque in lower winds. Uh, considering that most of the wind comes from the north here, um, which is that direction, it, it should perform a lot better. Um, so yes, I wouldn't really recommend buying one of these turbines for the weight, the size, the output just doesn't justify the cost of them. And this was about $800 um, from a seller here in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. That seller's no longer in business, no surprise there. Uh, COVID has uh, wiped a lot of businesses out, especially in the e-commerce areas. Um, I just can't afford to employ the staff. Uh, a couple of stats on this thing. It's rated at 48 volts, but uh, personally, I'd run it on a 24 volt system so that it doesn't have to spin so fast to put out the voltage. Um, height's about 1.2 metres. <coughs> Diameter is uh, 1.23, I think, so just a little bit wider than it is tall. Um, very heavy, 75 kilograms, so it was an absolute mongrel to get on the roof. It's got a lightning ball on the top of it in case it gets struck with lightning. Um, and you're supposed to run that down with a heavy copper strap that I haven't got it on there. I figure if lightning's going to strike this thing one way or the other, it's it's going to cook it, <laughs> even with an earth strap on it. So, um, yeah. Type Ma 400 watt, 48 volt wind turbine. Is it worth it? No. I would put your money into an Ista Breeze or um, a Missouri wind and solar turbine or some, whatever country you're in. Um, just look at the reviews on YouTube. People have done a, a stack of tests on Ista Breezes and the majority of them seem to be pretty good, pretty well made, good bang for buck. That's why I've ordered one. So it should be here this week and I'll do an unboxing video of that one when it arrives. And uh, then I'll have to make up a a tilt tower that tilts from there across, put the turbine on, winch it up, three more guy wires running to the edge of the building. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I hope this video was informative for you um, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.